I don't know about you guys, but I think that we've not been doing enough hacking, okay? We need to be hacking every single day of the universe, otherwise it's not enough. So today I wanted to do even more hacking because I'm already feeling the withdrawal symptoms, come on, that's so sad. Also, please ignore the hero, okay, is having a midlife crisis, give it some time, okay? Hello everybody, I'm Farrar, and today we're going to be doing some epic hacking, okay? And we're not going to be using unsophisticated tools like a Windows computer, okay? I know I've been using that in the past, okay, but this is lame. We're going to be using a Windows computer to host a virtual machine of Kali Linux, okay? It's going to be epic. And then we're going to solve the coolest Pico CTF problem in the universe. So I always knew that Kali Linux was really good for cybersecurity stuff, but then, this week, I had a little bit of free time, so I decided to look into some other cybersecurity stuff, and then I came across pen testing, and it turns out that Lily Kali Linux comes with all the tools you need for every single thing already installed, and it literally has, like, wordless install. It's crazy stuff, okay? I'm gonna show you exactly how crazy it is. But in order to use Kali Linux, we first gotta get a Kali Linux computer. But, unfortunately, we're stuck with this massive, nasty Windows computer, so we are gonna install a virtual machine. That is the first step. So first thing first, we gotta download VirtualBox because VirtualBox is basically the hypervisor that allows you to run virtual machines on your computer. So we click on this button, we click on that button, and we wait for a couple hours for it to download. Wait and wait and wait. God dang, I'm so impatient. I literally just stare at the timer yelling at it to go faster, but it just doesn't. It doesn't work, okay? I don't know why. It doesn't make sense to me. All right, finally, let's go. Come on, man, let's do it. All right, click next. Download it somewhere. Alrighty, uh, we will take all the shortcuts. No, we do not need shortcuts for VirtualBox. You're generally not seeing, not going to be clicking on VirtualBox that often. Alright, and then the networking, sure, okay, install. Alright, alright, so now we're going to restart my system, and last time I tried to record this, I literally made the mistake of thinking that it would still record while my computer is turning off. Big brain! <laughs> my recording software is on my computer, and it thought that it would still record after I turned it off. What the heck? <laughs> so, we'll be back at some point. Alright, so we are back. We have VirtualBox downloaded, which means that we could run VMs on our computer. But we want an easy way to start up these VMs, okay? Because it's kind of lame if you have this VM running, but yet I like spend two hours starting it up every single time. So in order to start it up quickly, we're just going to download Vagrant. Click on the first boy by HashiCorp. That's the best name ever. Ugh. Download this. Wait a couple hours for it to download. And then we are good. Five, four, three, two, one, and you better open. Come on. You got this? What the heck? There we go. Nef. Accept. Nef. Nef. Install. Epic. We good. Oh no, come on. We gotta start again. Alright, see you guys later. Alright, we have finally been resurrected from the dead, and now we are ready to actually make our Kali Linux virtual machine. Oh my god. So, in order to make our virtual machine, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to git bash, okay? We're gonna create a directory for our virtual machine. Oh my god. Kali, okay, and then we're gonna go into it, okay. And then all we gotta do, we gotta do vagrant init Kali Linux role. So that will create a vagrant file for us, which basically tells VirtualBox how to make the machine. So if we just look at the vagrant file, right? So you see right here saying that we're running Kali on this box, and then there's a bunch of commented out options that we could use if we wanted to. Now this option right here is kind of important, sync folder, because we want to be able to transfer files from our Windows computer over to our Kali Linux computer. So, in order to do this, we're going to sync the dot slash data file. So to do this, we're going to sync dot slash data to vagrant data. Alright, and the rest of it, for this one, we don't want to have the GUI because the GUI is lame. Graphical user interface, who needs a graphical user interface when you got Terminal, the best GUI in the universe, okay? Best thing you could possibly do with your life. Alright, and then we're set this to false, and we're fine with the VB memory, okay. And that's looking kind of hot, okay. So now all we gotta do is Vagrant up, and it should download our box for us like a cool kid. And for some reason on my Windows computer, it takes forever to download, which is so triggering, but whatever. We're gonna wait a whole hour, god dang it, but we'll be back, okay. And a couple hours later, we are finally back with even worse hair. How is this even possible, god dang it. But... It is finally working, and now we all installed all the stuff, we made cool stuff, stuff happened, and now we can actually get onto our virtual machine. And if you look at VirtualBox, right, we can see that our Kali Linux machine is running. And look, you can see the preview, oh my god, look, there's a login screen that flickers, I don't know why. But, now we just do Vagrant SSH, and it should be Gucci game. Alright, so now we are literally in our machine, we can see, LF. Oh my god, we are in our machine. This is, this is crazy stuff. I don't even know what. So essentially, if we want to put stuff in our home directory, all we got to do is copy some files over into slash home slash vagrant and we are good. 
All right, so now that we're in Vagrant at Kali, we could actually do some very cool stuff. Okay, we are in a Kali Linux machine, which means that it literally comes with binwalk, right? In fact, it already has some downloaded word list, so we could do a slash user slash uh, share slash word list. And then look, all of these epic word lists. Wait, why don't we CD in there? CD slash user slash share slash word list. Oh my god. Look, it even got a rocku.txt.gz, which is a gzip file. We should probably unzip that. Hold up. It has word list for durbuster, which basically means you could guess the directory in a website. Uh, fast track is just a word list. It's really cool stuff, okay? I promise you. We will actually use this. Okay, so we should probably like um, unzip the rocku. So all we gotta do is gzip-c rocku.txt. I should probably put a pseudo in the front of that. Pseudo. All right, and now if you look at it, we got rocky.txt, let's go, epic. Okay, so now we actually wanna solve a problem using our Kali Linux machine because that is cool. It really comes with the built-in password cracker, it's crazy, wait, hold up, let me show you. John, all right, let's look at this. <laughs> it literally comes with John the Ripper, which is basically a password cracker, epic. <laughs> Kali is too cool, okay, Kali is amazing. All right, so finally, let's get to Pico CTF, cause that is the fun stuff. Alright, so we're going to be doing an extremely cool web exploitation problem because it basically makes you use the password cracker and that's what I wanted to show you guys. So, first step, we got to go to this website and we got to figure out the flag. So, so basically it's saying that Jot is an online scratch pad where you can jot down whatever the heck you like, but you need to log in. So you can use whatever name you want other than admin. So, let us try admin because we are rebels, okay? We, we don't... Okay, <laughs> I guess we, are, we got shut down, this is so sad. Oh, what is saying? Uh, he's special and I'm not, this is so sad. But basically the point is, you can't log in as admin, god dang it. But I'm assuming in order to get the flag, we probably need the admin. So, if we look at this, it basically takes us to John the Ripper, but we already have the download, because we have a Kali Linux machine, you don't, guys don't, you guys just don't get how cool that is. So let's just try joining as John, okay? But this is lame, we can't do anything, there's no flag here, we can do that, we can log out, we can log back in as John, like a cool kid, and our scratch pad's gone. God dang it, this is so lame. So why don't we inspect this, and like, honestly, let's see, this is probably not that useful. Alright, bunch of useless nonsense here. Uh, I guess, not very useful. <laughs> but, another thing we can look at is what about cookies, how does it know? Because if I refresh the page, it still knows that I'm John. Somehow it knows that I'm John. Even if I close the page and then reopen it, it still knows that I'm John. So that means it must be using cookies. So let us look at what cookies we got. So you can see that it's a bunch of gibberish. That sounds nasty. But it turns out that this is actually some very useful gibberish that you should know about. Basically, this gibberish right here is called a JWT, or that also stands for JSON Web Token. So why don't we just decode this so I can explain what the heck it is. So we just put it in here. We go like that. And you can see, it basically stores our username. Now what's so special about a JWT? Why the heck does the website even need a JWT? Well it turns out JWTs are actually used in normal websites. So when you log on, right, you don't want to have to log on every single time you open the page. Like what happens if you accidentally refresh and then you have to log in? That's lame. So basically what JWTs let you do is they let you store information about the user without letting them change it, okay? So I cannot change my username to admin because I do not know the 256-bit secret right here. So essentially, the browser could give me this token, and then I could use it to log in, but I can't use it to log in as anybody else. So that's really cool, except for the fact that we actually need to log in, this is that. And the only way to log in as admin is to find the password, so how the heck are we going to find the password? Well basically, if we go back to our original um, JWT, right, basically what we want to do is we want to find the 256-bit secret, but we already have all the information right here. We just need to try different passwords to see what encodes the user John to this nonsense right here. Like this part right here is called a signature and that is based on the password and the data. So we need to find which password corresponds to this signature. And we can do that just using our good friend John the Rip. So let's go back here, we are going to clear all this nonsense and we are going to go back to our home directory and we are going to make a jwt.txt file. And we are going to not paste that in because that's not how things work. Oh man, I can't copy and paste in the Vagrant thing, so I am going to copy and paste it onto my own computer, and then we're going to sync it. So we went back to our own computer by clicking Control D. Now all we got to do is let's make a new file, make a files folder, or that's a high school file. So move file to files, okay. And now we go into files, and we want to make our jwt.txt. And I don't want to make it, make, what am I doing? That's not how we do it. Okay, vim jwt.txt. Alright, now we copy and paste this boy in. <laughs> nope. 
There we go. All right, so now we need to edit our vagrant file so that we could actually uh, move it over. So we're gonna add another thing folder. Oh my God. So this is just gonna be dot slash file and it'll go to our home directory, which was home slash vagrant. Oops, we need a slash in front. All right. And now we're gonna do vagrant uh, provision, which basically resyncs the folders, and then we will vagrant SSH to actually get the command line. Oh my god. All right, so now we do vagrant SSH. What, it didn't get copied, this is so sad, what? Hold up. Maybe I have to do vagrant up again. Let's try that. All right, so now it already has all the files. It copies it over. I just restarted the box. So now the password is vagrant, okay. And now, I don't know why it's not blue anymore, that's so sad, but we have jwt.txt, let's go. So, all we gotta do is we do john, jwt.txt, and then we do dash wordless, which basically means we wanna use a wordless, and we're gonna use the rockview.txt. So, in order to do that, we do slash user, slash share, slash wordless, slash, um, what was the next thing? Uh, john the ripper, uh, no, no, what the heck, rockview.txt. Oh! And look at that, we got the password, that is crazy, what the heck. So now we know the password, it basically cracked the password for us, and we wanted to see what the password it got was, like, just later, right? We can do dawn, that's that show, jwt.txt, and it can say, we cracked the password hash and got I love Pico. So now, we can actually sign in however we want. So first off, the first thing we gotta change is this to admin, right? And let's see what happens if we just do that, right? We don't actually put the password in. So we'll change the cookie. And we have an internal server error because it wasn't able to verify the signature. But then, if we actually put the I love Pico, then do it. Holy moly, we logged in as admin because it thought that we actually are admin because we were able to change the JWT because we had the password. Crazy stuff. So let us put that in, okay. Very good stuff. All right. So basically the way password crackers work is literally just do brute force assault, okay? They literally go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, A, B, A, B, A, C, whatever. But we added a word list. And basically what the word list do is they give a bunch of common passwords, okay? And then what John the Ripper does is it goes through the word list. It does like little combinations of stuff, adds like one, two, three at the end. It does a bunch of cool tricks. And then it eventually finds the password. So Rocky.txt is not like the biggest word list out there. You can find these word lists that are insanely huge and they could basically crack like literally any common password all right so we are done with this problem i hope you guys enjoyed thank you guys so much for watching password cracking is pretty cool like i literally tried it on my own and basically if you put like my name plus like one two three you can still find it if you put like anybody's name you can still find it if you put i am really cool this password cracker could still crack it in like half a second so the point is have good passwords and the point is have a Kali virtual machine. It's amazing. All right. I hope that was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Kali is amazing for CTFs if you guys are interested in that. But anyway, thank you guys for watching again and see you guys next time.